Hi, my name's Jed, and this is Write Better. The Goblet of Fire is my favourite Harry Potter novel. Today I'll analyse the book's near-perfect execution of a misunderstood element of story. Subplot. According to the Cambridge English Dictionary, a subplot is part of a story that develops separately from the main story. I'd argue this is how most people think about subplots. However, I think this definition is flawed. If we use this logic, we'll create fragmented, disjointed, and ultimately irrelevant subplots. After all, if we can separate the subplots from the main plots, what's the point? I find Wikipedia's definition more useful. A subplot is a secondary strand of the plot that is a supporting side story for any story or the main plot. Subplots may connect to the main points in either time and place or in thematic significance. Now let's look at the Goblet of Fire subplots. Note that I'm focusing on the book, not the movie. Goblet's main plot is Harry's quest to win the Triwizard Tournament. Its five subplots are Hermione's attempt to help the Ouse Helps by forming SPEU, or SPEW for short. Number two, Harry's crush on Cho Chang. Three, Rita Skeeter and the Daily Prophet. Four, Fred and George's Weasley's Wizard Weezers. And five, Voldemort's rise to power. I can feel it. The Dark Lord shall rise. So, how does Rowling use these subplots to craft an amazing novel? I believe the success of Goblet's subplots comes down to three factors. One, each subplot weaves into the main plot. In The Anatomy of Story, John Truby notes how subplots, when woven together, create the plot. This logic makes me prefer Wikipedia's definition over the Cambridge Dictionaries. The Cambridge Dictionary says a subplot develops separately from the main story, where Wikipedia says a subplot is a supporting side story for the main plot. Subplots may connect to main plots. Each subplot in Goblet is woven so tightly into the novel that you can't distinguish between the main plot and the subplots, just like how you can't separate a human's brain from the nervous system that feeds it information. So, how does each subplot weave into the main plot of Harry trying to win the Trigger's of Tournament? Subplot 1 leads to Harry reuniting with Dobby, who helps Harry with the second task. Subplot 2. Harry's crush on Cho Chang motivates him to beat Cedric in the tournament. Subplot 3. Rita Skeeter's stories put extra pressure on Harry to win the tournament. Her stories also hurt Harry's mentors and friends, making it harder for them to support him. Subplot 4. Fred and George's Weasley's Wizarding Weezers provides comic relief from the tournament. At the end, Harry gives them his tournament winnings so they can start their joke shop. Subplot 5. Harry's entrance into the tournament is all part of Voldemort's plot. Number 2. Each subplot is driven by a character with a goal. Subplot 1 is driven by Hermione's goal of improving conditions for house elves. Subplot 2 is driven by Harry's goal of attaining Cho's love. Subplot 3 is driven by Rita Skeeter's goal of uncovering the most scandalous stories she can find. Subplot 4 is driven by Fred and George's goal of making their prankster life into a full-time paying profession. And Subplot 5 is driven by Voldemort's goal of being reborn into a human, albeit noseless, form. This character-goal combination maintains narrative drive and increases conflict since different characters' goals tend to oppose each other. It also leads to active characters. Number 3. Each subplot develops the theme. Remember Wikipedia's definition from earlier? Subplots may connect to main plots in either time or place, or in thematic significance. The most important requirement of a subplot is that it links to the theme. But what is theme? Most people think theme is a vague concept like good versus evil, bravery, or friendship. This is kind of useless for writers. Way more useful to think of theme the way John Truby does, who writes, 
Theme is the author's view of how to act in the world. It is your moral vision. Now, got to be careful here because theme isn't about cramming a message down your readers' throats. Instead, theme is a one-sentence statement giving you an overall controlling idea for your story. This defines your tone, setting, characters, and plot. Returning to Harry Potter, the series is all about the coming of age of Harry, charting his transition from boyhood to manhood. Each book makes Harry more adult-like and aware of the world's complexities. So the Goblet of Fire's specific theme could be, as a child matures, they learn the world is nasty, and complex. Everything in the novel explores this controlling idea. People lie pretending to be someone else. Reporters ruin lives to get a decent story. And wizards torture muggles for fun. But the subplots are particularly important in covering this thing. Let's look at each subplot. Subplot 1. Harry learns the castle uses house elf slave labour. By the novel's end, he's learnt Hogwarts is nastier than it seemed at the start. Subplot 2. Harry becomes aware of his growing romantic desires, reflecting his transition through puberty. This makes school life more complex. Subplot 3. Rita Skeeter will lie, slander and break laws in pursuit of an attention-grabbing headline. Another thematically relevant aspect of this subplot is that it expands the story's world introducing wizarding media as a force that can affect one's life. Subplot 4 On a surface level, Weasley's wizard wheezes seem to be focused on comic relief. However, the light-heartedness of this subplot turns dark when Harry discovers Fred and George are owed money by Ludo Bagman, money they need to set up their joke shop. Bagman, however, swindles his way out of paying them. This makes Harry realise even so-called authority figures can be dishonest. Subplot 5 It's obvious how this subplot shows the nastiness of the world. Voldemort's out to kill Harry, and he uses a seemingly trustworthy mentor to deliver Harry to the graveyard where he tries to kill him. This subplot, more than any other, best shows the theme. When Harry first meets Moody, he trusts him. By the book's end, this trust is shattered. So, there we have it. If you want to write subplots as good as Rowling does, ensure each subplot weaves into the main plot, is driven by a character with a strong goal, and develops a theme. The Harry Potter series is phenomenal for lots of reasons, but the more I reread it, the more the subplots stand out. Rowling weaves subplots so wonderfully that there's always something new to pick up with each reread. And that, I think, is magical.